morning, everyone, and welcome back to uh, today's edition of our Torah, <coughs> 10 minute Torah power. Before we start learning the Chumash today, uh, being that today is a very auspicious day, a very special day, a holy day, it's the 10th day of Shvat, which marks the, uh, the day that the previous Rebbe passed away. 70 years ago this morning. And it's also the day that the Rebbe, our Rebbe, became the Nasi, became the leader of our time. And the day before the previous Rebbe passed away, that Friday, Erev Shabbos, he published a discourse of 20 chapters that was to be given out over the next few months and the first, first five chapters of that discourse he published Friday, the day before he passed away. And he's asked that it be studied that Shabbos. And the Rebbe saw it as his last will and testament in a way. That that's the last discourse that he published before he passed on to the other world. So the Rebbe then over the next 20 years, when he uh, had uh, held his gathering, the Hasidic gathering, to celebrate or to commemorate uh, the yard site of the previous Rebbe on Yud Shvat every year, he said his own discourse in 1951 on the first chapter of that discourse, 1952 on the second chapter, until 1970, and he finished the 20th chapter. In 1971, he began again. And another cycle. So today we have about 40 to 45 discourses of the Rebbe on Bossi Lagani. Now that discourse that the previous Rebbe published in honor of his yard site, and the, I mean it's not his yard site, it was the day before he passed away, begins with the words, Bossi Lagani, I have come to my garden. Now for the next two minutes, I'm just going to read the first few lines of that discourse. Because today is Yud Shvat, today is the yard site, today is the, Rebbe, the day the Rebbe became Rebbe. So I'm going to read. I need you to, can you just open it up again for me? I think it, I'm going to read the first few lines. And then, then we'll learn some Chumash, okay? So the, the discourse begins like this. <laughs> I have come, Basu Lagani Achesi Kala. I have come into my garden, my sister, my bride. This is a verse from the book of Songs, Shira Shirim, chapter 5, verse 1. This is King Solomon's writing this. But of course, this is Hashem, this is a prof prophecy. God says, I've come to my garden, my, my sister, my bride. Okay? The Song of Song, the, the Medrash explains. Song of Songs, the Medrash explains, is not to be taken at face value. When, this guy, when, when Hashem says, I've come to my, uh, I've come to my uh, garden, my sister, my bride, what's God talking about? It is a metaphor describing the ongoing relationship between God and His bride, the Jewish people. The above verse, for example, refers to the time of the construction of the sanctuary. Where God says, I've come back to my garden calls it his garden. What is it, his garden? This is, was once his garden. He was once here before. When was God here? When he created the world. When he created the world, God was completely revealed, comfortable in his world. There was no schism. There was no contradiction. The spiritual, the physical was all one. And God was completely revealed here. So the Medrash continues. Now, what happened was, there were seven sins that caused God's presence, God's Shekhinah, God's divine presence to be chased away, so to say, removed from this world. What was the first major sin? Of course, the sin of the tree, the forbidden fruit, the tree of knowledge. What happened as a result of that Adam and Eve removed God's presence, his revealed presence from this physical world up to the heavens. 
Then came another subsequent six sins and removed him from the first heaven to the sixth, to the, to, to the second, to the third, all the way up to the seventh heaven. Finally, with the construction of the Mishkan, the tabernacle in the desert, God says, I've come back to my bride. His Shekhinah was brought back down to earth. Because what was in the Mishkan, what was in the temple, God's presence was completely revealed over there when you walked into the base of Migdash. First the tabernacle, then later in Jerusalem, in the holy temple, God's presence was fully felt. So he says like this, Medrash Rabbah observes that the word used is not Lagan, I've come to a garden, which would mean to the garden, but Lagani, which means to my garden. And this implies lignuni, which means my to my bridal chamber. What does this mean? For as the commentaries on the Medrash explain, this possessive form implies a private place, such as the chamber in which the spiritual union of groom and bride is consummated. The divine presence is thus saying, I have come into my bridal chamber, into the place in which my essence was originally revealed, which is earth. This is with God's garden. And he's coming back. He's not coming here for the first time. He's coming back now. When they built the tabernacle, God came back to the place where he originally was once before. The Medrash continues in the beginning. The essence of the Shekhinah was apparent in this lowly world. When God created the world, his, the essence of his being was revealed there. There was no concealment. There was no got nothing. Later, on account of the sin of Cain, I'm sorry, however, in the wake of the cosmic sin of the tree of knowledge, the Shekhinah departed from the earth and rose into the heavens. It was no longer here on earth. Later, on account of the sin of Cain, which killed Abel, and then of Enosh, beginning, beginning the idol worship practice, the Shekhinah withdrew even further from this world, rising from the nearest heaven to the second and then to the third. Later yet, the sins of the generation of the deluge, of the flood, caused it to, re to recede from the third heaven to the fourth, and so on. This progressive recession of the de revealed divine presence is alluded to in the wording of the verse that relates that Adam and Eve heard the sound of God walking about in the garden. If you remember in Genesis 3.8, it says of it there that Adam and Eve heard, after they ate from the tree, they heard the 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 uh, the sound of God walking in the in the garden. Now, Rabbi Abba notes, the great Rabbi Abba, the sage of the Talmud, notes, the verse does not use the expected form of the verb mahalich that he was walking around, that God was um, um, uh, walking in the garden. Rather. It says mit halich. It's a different type of a different Hebrew. If you know Hebrew, you know that this is a different kind of language, a different word, which suggests that they heard the divine presence springing back in successive stages of withdrawal, back and forth, springing back. In other words, he wasn't just walking around the garden. He was springing. He was being removed from the garden. That's what they saw, heard. The Medrus proceeds to explain that after the sins of the seven generations that caused, after the, again, after the sins of seven generations that caused the divine presence to withdraw seven spiritual levels from its initial manifestation in this world, all the way up to the seventh heaven, seven great tzaddikim, you hear this? Seven righteous individuals arose, whose divine service drew the Shekhinah, the divine presence, down once more into this world below. So he begins, who were these seven? So he says, through the merit of Abraham, which was the first, the Shekhinah was brought down from the seventh heaven to the sixth. Through the merit of Yitzchak, the Shekhinah was brought down from the sixth heaven to the fifth, and so on, until Moshe. Moshe was the seventh of these tzaddikim, and as we know, all those who are seventh are cherished, something special about the seventh. So he drew the revelation of the Shekhinah down again from the first heaven down to earth here below. He brought the Shekhinah back to our world, Moses, the seventh. Divinity was primarily revealed in the Beis Hamikdash, As it is written, they shall make me a sanctuary and I will dwell within them. I will dwell in them. And he says here, 
significantly, the last Hebrew word of this verse is not as expected, Bishachanti betocho, I will dwell in it. In this, because only one temple, right? They didn't build a lot of temples, they built one. It should have said, I will dwell in it. But it doesn't say that, it says in them. But betocham, in them, which means within them, God craves a dwelling place within each individual Jew. He wants to dwell within us, each individual Jew. That's all I'm going to read from this discourse, but I will add that in 1951, the Rebbe officially assumed, took over the leadership of the, Rebbe, of the movement of Chabad. The Rebbe said like this, that we too are the seventh generation from the Ra'al Rebbe. The Hasidic movement began a new process of bringing God down to earth in a new way, one that was never before. And he said that from the Alter Rebbe to our generation, the seventh. And the Rebbe was crying very much. He said, we didn't ask to be in the, in the seventh generation because being in the seventh means that the previous Rebbe, who was the sixth, passed away. And now there's a new generation. So he said, we didn't ask for this and we don't want it. It's not something that we chose. It's not by our doing, but it was put upon us. And the Rebbe said that all the sevens are cherished. And he said that our job for this generation, and this is like this is also the Rebbe's mission statement for our for his for our generation, is to finally once and for all bring the Shekhinah back down to earth in a way that was even more than the Shekhinah was here in the first day of creation when God created the world till the sin of the tree. Because then we did just then it's just we didn't gain anything by all of this. We have to have now even a greater revelation once we bring him down. And that's what the Rebbe's whole leadership was about, to bring the Shechina down to earth, not only in one locale, but in the entire planet Earth, all over. And as we know, the Rebbe did that. And uh, it's, we still await the ultimate of this, that the coming of Mashiach may be in our time. But the Rebbe was, saw this as the mission of our generation, to bring heaven once and for all back down to earth in every single thing and that was the Rebbe's whole when you look when you analyze the Rebbe's years of leadership and today is the 70th anniversary that's all he did that's all he thought about is to love another yid another person and bring the shechina into that person and to uh, bring that to, to make that person a godly person to make the <laughs> the ultimate of this will be when Mashiach comes the number 70, by the way, is, of course, a completion. We know the lifespan of a human being is says in the Tehillim is 70 years. If you're really strong, you go to 80, and then whatever. 70, we consider young. But for most of history, 70 was ripe old age, right? That was the lifespan. So when a person reaches 70, he has fulfilled a full cycle of life. So that ever 70th anniversary is a full cycle, God willing, today... No delays, Mashiach should come and fulfill the Rebbe's wish to bring the Shekhinah back down to earth. May it be speedily in our time. Amen. Okay, just for a few, I'll, I know that it's a little later, so we'll just read a few verses. And today's, today's portion talks about the resurrection, I mean, the, uh, sorry, the, the splitting of the sea. So the sea split, we learned that yesterday already. And the Egyptians were drowned in the sea. And that was the end of them. And now the Jewish people, as they crossed the sea and they saw the great miracles that just happened, they, together with Moshe, sang the famous Az Yashir, the famous song of the sea. And that is in chapter 15 on page 407, verse 1. Then, when they saw how God had miraculously saved them from the Egyptians once and for all, Moses and the Israelites sang this song to God. Being in the midst of a sublime prophetic experience, Moses was able to quote Pharaoh's words, which he had not heard, and predict future events. They said as follows, I will sing to God for he is exalted. Beyond any other exalted being, beyond any other exalted being, only he is absolutely supreme. He is super, super, superhuman, for a human can only throw a rider off a horse, but he casts both horse and rider into the sea. Furthermore, I will sing to God even though 
He is exalted beyond my capacity to articulate as opposed to human rulers, whom people praise beyond their true merit. He cast horse and rider together into the sea, miraculously keeping the riders astride while the water tossed them up and down from the depths of the surface and back again repeatedly. They were churning, they were thrown up and down. God's might and retribution were my salvation. When the sea split, the heavens opened, and I saw a vision of God. I pointed to it and said, there is my, this is my God, I will build him an abode, the temple. I will proclaim his glory to all the nations of the earth. I am not the first to do this. He is my father's God, and others the same God he, wor wor he worshipped, and I will exalt him. God is the master of war. God fights his wars not with weapons, as does a mortal king, but with his name. And even when God is engaged in war, God simultaneously manifests his mercy. His name, Hashem, the Tetragrammaton, the Tetragrammaton, the Shem Havaya, by sustaining all his creatures. He hurled Pharaoh's chariots and army into the sea, and the elite of his officers were sunk in the mud that the bed of the sea of reeds had become. Once again, I'm sorry, once they sunk, the deep water could cover them, they sank into the depth like a rock. I just want to mention, we'll stop here, but I want to mention, and verse 2, it says over here, sorry, yeah. Ze keli van veu, this is my God, and I will build him an abode, as he translates it here. I will, I will proclaim his glory to all the nations of, of the earth. Yeah, I'm not the first to do this, he's my father's God. And I will exalt him. So this is beautiful words, right? But I just want to mention that there's a, a, another hint in this verse, which is very relevant and very practical. A lot of people today are not inspired Jewishly. You know, they, 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 God, Judaism is the God and the Judaism of their father, of their grandfather. It's not their God. I don't mean that quite literally, chas v'sholem. But the way it's treated. A lot of us, we, it's, my father made Kiddush, my father made the Shabbos, my grandfather made a Seder. You know, we're different already, right? So if it's Kaylee, if, you can, you, if the God is your God, then you're going to build him on a boat. Then it'll be real. But if it's my father's God, if you talk about God and Judaism as something that your grandfather did, your grandfather was a shocher, my great grandfather was a chazan, my mother was a what a tzaddik is, or whoever, then Barimi Menu, you are exalting him, you're removing him, you're, you're you're removing him, you're exalting him above you. In other words, you're it's something that is of a different reality. It's not you. And that's no, I'm saying only if it's only your father. It has to become your own God. God has to be real in our life. It can't just be my grandfather's God. It has to also be ours. And when it is ours, then it's a, then you will create an abode for Hashem. If it's only Elikei Avi, if it's only my grandfather's father, my God, my father's God, meaning the past, then by many you relegate him to higher realities. He doesn't penetrate your own reality, and that's not good. It has to become our God, and it's our God because it's our Father's God. So they go together, obviously. But you can't just rely on the fact that you have good yichus. You have good lineage. I come from a great family. I come from a great... It's got to become yours. And if it's not, if you, it, it stops by your father and grandfather, then it remains something transcendent. It's a different world. Well, that's it's a good that. resume to have so you can Definitely. continue it. Exactly. You know what they say? Yichus is a zero. Yichus means lineage. Good lineage is a zero. If you put your one before it, it becomes a ten. All you have to do is put one before it, and then it becomes a ten. If you have double yichas, a double zero, you have a grandfather and a father that were good, and you put a, your one before it, it becomes a hundred. But the zero without the one is what's it? It's nothing. It's a garnished. So you got to put your one before the zero, and then it becomes ten times 
what you can do on your own. Have a wonderful day, everyone, and be inspired. Thank you very much.